Now, if you're talking about job creation in Uganda, you cannot move away from agriculture. For majority of Ugandans depend on the sector for their survival or livelihoods, if you want to put it that way. Now, there are policies that are needed in various subsectors within the wide agriculture sector that would free the potential the sector has to transform the lives of many Ugandans. Still talking grain, we go for the commissioner who sits right at the helm of this sector to give us an idea of what they're doing in that space. All right, Doctor, it's nice to have you on the show. Man and Markets, you're most welcome. Thank you. Now, give us a brief digest about the grain subsector. I mean, how is it doing at the moment? The grain subsector is one of the key subsectors in agriculture and agro-processing. And we have seen it now it increasingly attracting many players, uh, many farmers are now getting into growing grains, uh, maize, we are talking of maize, beans, sorghum, and other cereals. Uh, the sector, the government is giving it key attention, uh, especially you know, after the grain trade policy was approved in 2015. We are seeing uh, so many players coming in in the areas of warehouses. You know, the ministry hosts the Uganda Warehouse System Authority, which is mandated to supervise and stand and, and certify warehouses. Financing the grain sector is also picking up because uh, you remember the government put up the microfinance support center to support uh, small-scale uh, producers, okay? Then through cooperatives and circles. You know, cooperatives, cooperatives have been promoted to pool resources and they can get uh, loans using their models. So let's move on to the issue of um, the policy and uh, the regulatory environment, you know, as a person who sits in that space. Um, do we have a policy for this subsector? Yes, we, uh, the ministry developed the policy uh, which was approved in 2015. And this policy came up as a result of our grain failing to get market. I remember in 2013-2014 when World Food Program stopped buying grains from Uganda as a result of the poor quality and the inconsistency in surprise. So it, it was clear that we needed a policy and the ministry embarked on developing a policy which was uh, developed through a multi-sectoral approach with uh, many MDAs, agriculture, local government, and other de de departments and agencies all participated and this policy was approved in 2015. After that, we embarked on developing the implementation strategy and action plan which was finalized in 2017 and launched in 2018. The objective is largely, of course, the vision of this policy is to have a globally competitive sector uh, that can support food security, uh, revenue incomes, increased incomes, and job creation. So moving on to the strategic level, um, how are we doing there? How is the strategy? Do we have a strategy to you know, bring this policy to life? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, uh, at a, by 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 law, or by, I should say, it's a regulation that you have to develop a policy and an implementation strategy and action plan. So this policy was followed by developing its implementation strategy and an action plan. This was uh, finalized in 2017, and we launched it in 20 last year, 2018. It is already being implemented and uh, the details of how the, each specific objective is to be achieved are highlighted in this uh, strategic plan. And uh, we have uh, already mobilized the key stakeholders, key partners in implementing this policy strategy. We have uh, the private sector players, like the Green Council of Uganda, the East African Green Council, 
we have development partners, we have our, our organizations like World Food Program that have carried out, carried out sensitization programs, trained farmers on how to take care of uh, grain after harvesting, storage infrastructure. Yeah? And now we have started seeing results. Now, I will ask you this, Doctor, as a keen observer you know, of the sector, as a person who has interest in the sector. Do you think that grain is one of the areas where you know, we can say it's a strategic crop that can help with incomes, you know, in addition to the traditional crops that we know, like coffee, cotton, and tea? Yeah, of course you have heard His Excellency has been moving around uh, guiding the farmers that, you know, there are crops that need large acreage. Grain is not a crop of the small acreage farmers. So for those that have large acreage, grain can be very uh, profitable. It's a crop that can bring revenues. But for those that are smallholder farmers, we don't encourage them to, to get into large-scale growing of, of grain because the profits will be really marginal. So what would be your final word you know, to people in the grain subsector? You know, most of our farmers have the tendency of drying on the ground. And that's where the challenge starts from. That's where the, the grain attracts the, the aflatoxins. Because as long as the drying process is not clear, they are not dried properly, then when you store them, molds grow, and you find farmers are losing. Actually, now we are talking of 30 to 40 percent for service losses. So I think, uh, by and large, we need to pay attention to the post harvest handling. So it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your interest in the green sector. Anytime.